Okay, so for the first text audio visualizer that we are creating, let's make the letters of the lyrics jump up and down as if they are the audience, you know, bouncing up and down enjoying the song. Let's jump on into After Effects. I don't know why the country just came out. All right, so let's start by creating a new composition here, and I'm going to drop in this awesome hip hop R&B track from Musicbed. Next, we can press Control or Command plus T to bring out the type tool here. And now we can click anywhere here on the composition window to write out the lyrics to our song. And then I can hit Command D or Control D to duplicate this text layer, and then I can move it to the next part and change the lyrics to go along with the song. So after writing out all the lyrics, this is what we get. Is it everything you wanted? You so, so right now it's super static. Let's add some life to these lyrics. Let's make it fun. To make it fun, we're gonna have to get a little bit technical, but trust me, it's worth it. You're going to right click on the song here and go to keyframe assistant. And here we're going to convert the audio to keyframes. So After Effects will create this audio amplitude layer. And if I expand it here, I can delete the left and right channels and just keep both channels because that's all we need. If I select the slider here with all the keyframes and then go into the graph editor, I can see how all these keyframes go up and down following how loud each part of the song is. With this setup, I can now open up the scale parameter for my text and we can parent this to the slider and now the text will scale up and down to the song. But this is old news. I made a video about that years ago. What if we make each letter jump individually? So we can do that by selecting the text and go to animation and add a text selector and choose range. So now we will get this range selector under our text here. And if I have it selected, two lines will show up here inside of the comp window. I can drag the starting line and the ending line to a single letter to select it. And behind animator one here, we're going to hit add and choose position. Now I can parent this newly added position parameter to our audio amplitude slider. And as you can see here, that one letter that we selected is moving to the song, but it's not moving the right way. I wanted it to jump. To fix this, let's expand position here so we can see its expression. Now expressions are just kind of coding that you can do inside of After Effects to make different elements in your scene do different things. We can pretty much ignore most of this text here and just focus on this last part. Both of these temps here represent the X and Y axis. So X is horizontal and Y is vertical. So since I only want the text to move in the Y axis vertically, I'll change the first temp to zero and add a minus to the second temp because without the minus, the text will move down, which is not what we want. Hold on a minute. I know this might be a lot to take in. Let's take a deep breath. Nice. And before we jump into some more cool visualizers, let me introduce myself in case you're new here. I'm Kelsey. I'm the creator of Premiere Gal here. You'll find all sorts of helpful video editing, visual effects, Photoshop, even audio tips that can help you create better content. And do me a favor, do me a solid here. If this video is helping you out so far, be sure to give it a thumbs up as well as subscribe so I know if this content is helpful. All right, so back inside of After Effects, if I play this, right now our letter is jumping too much because the value is almost always above zero. So to fix this, let's take a look at the handy little graph editor here for our slider. Get a little bit nerdy here. So here we need to add an expression. So you're going to hold Alt on a PC or Option on a Mac and click the stopwatch on the slider to enable expressions. And if you do not see the expression editor here under the graph, you can enable it by hitting this button. So on the second line here, let's write in linear parentheses value comma. So this first value here is the lowest point in the graph that you want the text to react to. And as you can see from the graph, there's not much happening below 30. Next is the highest point in the graph. And since anything above 60 seems pretty much the same, let's just write in 60 
as our highest point. So next here is what you want the slider to be once the graph goes below 30. So I'll just put in zero here so it won't affect the letter's position. And after that is the slider's value when the graph goes past 60. So in this case, let's put 25. And now is a good time to hit play to see what we have with the bounce. For me, I think I want the letter to go a little bit higher. So let's go back into the slider's expression and let's change the last value here to 50. All right, so now we can add some variety so that way all the letters aren't jumping the same, but have some more variables. So what we can do is duplicate this audio amplitude layer two more times. And next, this is where you can go in and change the values in their expressions to react differently to the graph. For example, I want this one to only react to the top part of the graph. So the text will only jump when the kick drum hits. So back at the text here, let's duplicate the range selector and have them each select a different letter. And we can add in a fill color just for now to make it easier so we can distinguish which one is selected. And now I can duplicate animator one and move the range selector to the other letters. So once I have all three animators all selecting different letters here, I can go in to its position and parent it to a different audio amplitude layer. So to make it simple here, all the letters selected in animator one will bounce differently than those selected in animator two. And of course, you can obviously create as much variety as you want following those steps. For example, you can duplicate more audio amplitudes and then assign them to whatever letters or words that you want. And once I'm done doing the same thing to the other text layers, this is the result. Is it everything you wanted? So all the awesome music that you've been hearing in this video and that we're going to be using to create all these cool text visualizers is from Musicbed. And let me tell you why I love Musicbed. They have a ton of top quality music created by real artists and it's easy to license to use in my videos. If we're talking top quality, let the music speak for itself. like stuck in a rut in an edit, when I'm listening to this music, it just gets that creativity going. And this is the coolest part. Have you ever heard a song in a commercial on Spotify or Apple Music? And you're like, gosh, I wanna use something similar to that. Well, Musicbed has this new search by song where you can literally search any popular song and AI will scrub its music catalog to find music that's similar to that song and vibe. I know. Pretty cool. So next time you're doing a commercial edit for a client, think about how you can combine some of these cool audio visual effects that we're talking about in this video with your music to just give that extra oomph to your edit. I promise you, your client will be impressed. So after switching to music bed, my team and I have saved a ton of time and we just love the music. I think I said that a couple times, right? We love it. And if you wanna make the switch to music bed, you can use my affiliate link just down below to get a 14 day free trial. Thanks again to music bed for sponsoring this segment of the video. Now let's jump back into some more cool audio visualizer effects. For our next one here, I wanna put this wavy audio visualizer inside our text. This could be the song name, this could be the lyrics. I mean, it's completely up to you. And of course I got another bop here from Musicbed inside my comp. And for this one, I'm just going to write out the song name in bold letters. To create our visualizer, we first need to make a new solid layer. And let's press enter and rename it to audio viz, just to keep it organized. And now from effects, we're going to search audio spectrum and now we're going to drag it on this layer. Now inside of effect controls, under audio layer, make sure our music track is selected. And under that, yep, we're going deep here. I'm gonna change all these settings to get the look I want. And you can pause right now and copy these parameters or you can make your own look. The important thing about our style and design here is to make the visualizer the same color as our text. So I'm liking how this looks right now. So now underneath the side options, let's pick side A. And so that way we only get the top half 
of the visualizer. To make this layer only appear inside of the text here, go to the visualizer layer and under track mat, we're going to choose the text layer. If you don't see this option, try clicking on the toggle switches below. That should do the trick. Let's see what we got. Can't speak your body language. All right, so to get the text outline, just duplicate the text layer and put it on top of our visualizer. And under its properties here, let's disable the fill and add in some stroke. And now we can customize it however we want. Maybe add some glow, maybe add some noise to get that vintage feel going. Can't speak your body language. And we can also make this text bounce around like we did in the previous example, just to make it a little bit more interactive. Can't speak your body language. Let's make something even cooler and shout out to our friends over at Easy Edit who are the pioneers of this effect. So this time I want the text to glitch out to the song, but don't worry, it's actually a lot easier than it looks. In my comp, I have this track from Musicbed and a text layer added. So first let's right click on the song and let's create keyframes from the song like we did earlier. And then we can add an adjustment layer to the timeline. And here we can apply the displacement map effect to it. And I have this glitchy stock footage clip that I'm going to use as our displacement map here. So let's drop it in the timeline here and let's hide it because we don't want to see it, but we're going to use it. We need to go to the adjustment layer here and then go to effect controls. And here we can pick the glitchy footage as our map layer. And immediately our text has this cool glitchy look, but it's kind of random. So let's add some adjustments here. To make it follow the song, we first need to expand the displacement map and then parent the max horizontal displacement and max vertical displacement to the slider under the audio amplitude layer. It's finally moving to the song. So you can change how much it moves by adding an expression to the slider like we did before. But I think I'm happy with how it looks by default. To make it even cooler, I can pre-comp everything and add the CC scale wipe effect to the pre-comp. And under the effects here in effect controls, let's bump up the stretch value and let's set the direction to 180 degrees so it's pointing down. The text will start to look like it is melting. Now I can slowly move the center point down to shorten the melt here. And now I can duplicate the scale wipe effect to do the same thing, but have it go upwards this time. Let's make it even nicer by adding in some glow, some noise, and how about this quick chromatic aberration effect, which is actually a free plugin for After Effects. So here's the final result. And by the way, our Gal Toolkit extension, the After Effects version comes with its own audio visual categories in both circle and line design. So if you want a template to just quickly go in and create some cool audio visualizers, for your next album, for a client, for a podcast, or whatever, you can check out our Gal Toolkit extension, which I'll link to down below, which was developed by our team and is also informed by you. So if you want to see more, I'll put a link below for our suggestion form as well. If you want to learn more fun, creative effects for After Effects, you can check out this video. And if you want more videos on After Effects, be sure to give this video a thumbs up. That's all for today's video. Stay creative. And as always, keep creating better video with Gal. See you next time. Bye. Ooh.